So you are all from the island of Albion. Uh, Albion is, um, well, it's Dark Ages England, but um, different than our world by just a little bit. Several hundred years ago, Arthur, the one true king, um, fought a war across the island uh, against the fairy peoples of Albion and overthrew their power and established the age of steel and man. And unfortunately, at the end of that war, Arthur's own son was afflicted by something, changed uh, by the other, and uh, began to uh, lead a rebellion across the island, uh, and eventually swore his service to chaos. Uh, chaos is this evil, malevolent force that burbles up from, from underground, uh, and things come up from underneath regularly. And although um, the forces of chaos were defeated, uh, Arthur was slain. And now Albion is in ruins. The little kingdom states of, uh, of its knights and barons and nobility uh, squabble and fight with one another. And especially among its borderlands, um, there are places that people go no further. And there are strange lights in the sky. And, um, well, anyways, you all have traveled to uh, a border town called Caden's Rest. And uh, you've been led by uh, someone in your company, a Perderi, uh, who is a, um, a somewhat famed and experienced adventurer. And you're all here for glory, gold, fame secrets uh, something drives you or just the the desire to destroy evil and anyways Perduri pays for a ferry to carry you across the waters uh, and into a old and gloomy hoary mossy wood it's swampy here and on a hillside you find dark leaning stones about one and a half times the size of a man and uh, among those stones you you touch the stone and even in the heat of the day the black stone is cold and uh, there's a rimy kind of frost even though it's a hot day and it's well in the spring and it's a clear sunny day outside in albion and you crest the top of a hill and it's almost like the sun sort of like blinds you. And you see beyond it a verdant and beautiful valley. And you go down into the valley and you speak to some of the residents and they speak a strange language. But you recognize it. It's, it's, uh, it's French. And when you mention Albion, they look at you like you're an idiot. You go back up to the hill, back to the stones. It's there the way you left it. So, and anyways, when you're exploring this valley, you, um, you discover in the valley that there is this castle. And there's a, a strange kind of light uh, flick, just uh, glimmering around the, the, the castle. It reminds you of what you see in the night sky north of the Pictlands. And um, you have heard that there are treasures, that this is a, the, a haunted castle, that there's also treasures that have simply been abandoned for the taking. So, led by Perderi, you have uh, traveled to the nearby town. Um,
Um, so don't worry, you can speak French. <laughs> uh, but um, you're in a town called Tours en Savoy. And if anybody listening is French or French Canadian or Belgian or, or whatever, I'm sorry, I just kind of have to deal with this. I can't speak French. So, um, and um, you learn that the castle is called Zintillen and that it is the castle of a, uh, a famous, maybe actually a better term would be infamous ro- uh, noble family that has abandoned and left the castle called the Malavals. And... Um, this town, um, Tours on Savoy, is uh, it's beautiful here, and it's springtime in France, in southern France, uh, and so it is. Uh, there are uh, cherry farms and lavender fields planted centuries ago, um, and uh, wildflowers, and uh, the whole air is just it's fragrant here. And the town is along these main trade roads. So uh, the businesses here, the, the wildflowers, they gather them and they adorn them along the, the entrances to, to, to the businesses and buildings. And the whole town just smells wonderful. And it's very expensive here. And it costs about twice as much here to do things as it does in Caden's Rest. Um, and um, you find a tavern. Hey, AJ. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to give you the one sentence version. <laughs> okay. <laughs> per Derry uh, commissioned a ferry boat to the other side of the river and found ferry stones. And now you're in France. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, there's a haunted castle that has treasure in it. So interesting. Okay. Uh, the group caller tonight, and I'll introduce you all. This is my friend AJ. Uh, he is a regular in uh, both Journeys into Darkness, which is uh, Barrow Maze. Uh, he's also a regular in Roppin' Othic, the, the longer-running game that we do in the same setting. Um, AJ, I don't think you've met Nostromo. Nostromo is actually the group caller tonight. He's Well, maybe you've met him in Journeys into Darkness. He plays in it. I think so, yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, and then um, uh, Elijah uh, is, uh, this is your first OSR game? The first time playing? Yes. It's exciting. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, fictionally, uh, Perduri would have paid for the ferry, led them across. Uh, uh, Nostromo's character, which we'll, we'll kind of briefly describe our characters in a second. Nostromo's character, uh, Godric who is a strange outsider, um, uh, a, a, a strange man. Uh, he, he will be the group caller tonight. But anyways, uh, you discover this castle that is um, cast in fairy light. And um, it is near a beautiful valley of lavender and wildflowers in a very overpriced French village. And you find a, uh, uh, a tavern here called the black comedian where you can organize your uh your adventure for the evening and uh i will describe what you have in town and what your options are and uh and then i'll hand it over to the group caller um let's see here so um <clears throat> this tavern uh you can tell that there are some something like a sort of adventurer here. There are people in armor and with arms. Uh, there are shady people. Um, there are uh, mademoiselles uh, serving drinks and food and laughing am- amidst the patrons. Many of the patrons are very well dressed. Some of them look like travelers. Um, the uh, accommodations here are excellent. They're, the wood is oak and cherry and there's a uh, a comfortable fireplace everything in here smells clean and uh, fragrant and um, in the town as you saw on the way in you noticed that there was a church a uh, the guild sign of an apothecary um, a a curious and antique shop there was a dark alleyway uh, where you could hear glass shattering 
and voices, and you th thought you hear the strikes of, uh, of fist upon flesh. There was the guard, the gatehouse, and then the black comedian, and then a bunch of shops that would probably not help aid you as an adventure. Now, this is the night before. This is the night of um, Abrian of the 22nd of Light's Tide. And um, you're making your preparations to uh, journey the one mile trek, which is not overland. You'll just make it there one mile tomorrow to uh, to Castles and Tillin. Um, before I hand it over also, the proprietor of the Black Comedian, Fernand Bonnel, he's a handsome man with a oiled mustache and goatee and, um, and uh, very well dressed. And uh, as you come in this evening, he says, would you like the special? And he like winks at you. <laughs> And this is for the caller. And then after that, to answer that, you've got it to organize the adventure. What is the this special that you say? Oh, I just know your type. Your kind comes in. You might need um, preparations for an adventure. For a special price, I could help. Only five gold pieces. Includes a uh, room uh, and uh, dinner and breakfast. A bit rich for me, but this, this whole land is new, so I shall give him five gold. Very well. He smiles and he says, uh, uh, Rooms and uh, food for the rest of you, two gold pieces. And, um,. With it, your hundred gold, you can assume, uh, you can assume, uh, Thetis, that you have two gold pieces to spare. Uh, yes, yes, I do. Um, all right. Let's see here. He uh leans forward to uh. So since you spent the five gold pieces, he'll lean into uh to Perderi. And uh, kind of put his hand up to the side of his face, away from, away from Thetis. Or I'm not. I'm sorry. Away from Godric. Um, and he'll say, "I would be careful. There is an ancient forest cult. It works somewhere within the mountains nearby. Beware of stone suckers." And then he prepares your food. Uh, another thing is, uh, could you each briefly describe your characters, starting with Godric? Uh, big bald man, uh, uh, big beard, and uh, he's basically a traveling druid. All right, uh, what about Perderi? Uh, sure, Pradari is a average, slightly above average, kind of height man, burly of build. Um, he has a kind of trimmed short beard, and he often wears a kind of like a winged helm, kind of propped up on top of his head, uh, wearing full plate that seems to have been um, well maintained, but seriously battered with some scorch marks in some places. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's generally him. He's, uh, always got a bit of a, a smile in his eye and, uh, is quick to merriment, but, um, slow to drink. All right. And what about Thetis, the cleric? Uh, so you see Thetis, uh, well-dressed in armor. He's clearly armed. Uh, yet he doesn't appear like that physically capable. He looks like he's having trouble just be able to just wear the stuff, the very armor he's wearing, everything. But he seems well off. He seems a little bit rounder than most people, and uh, yeah, it just seems to be just more or less a well-off uh, type of cleric where uh, just doesn't seem to be that physically strong. Nice. All right, um, Godric. Uh, before you bed down in this lavish. 
appointment for the evening uh, and enjoy your food, uh, what preparations would you all like to make for your adventure for tomorrow? Well, I think most importantly, having everyone carry some food and water. Yes, it's a good idea. Um, it's how far away is the castle? Ten it's to like twenty a... minute trek. Okay, so very in civilized land, so no encounters. Okay, so. Yeah, be sure to bring at least a few days, depending on how long we plan to be there. Um, are, do y'all have adequate sources of light? Um, do we have something like a like a ten foot pole or uh, any other tools or means for checking for traps or the like? Uh, I'm carrying uh, flint and steel and ten torches. Okay. Um, I have seven torches. No, I have six torches actually. Um, I will. So, mm -hmm. so we have a, a druid, we have a cleric, and we have a fighter, correct? Yes. Um, are there any uh, people offering their services for hire here? It looks as if you could find some if you wanted to. Um, would anyone like to, or should Prodary um, hire a a thief or some torch bearers or something like that? Is anyone feeling uh, inclined as such? I'm thinking, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm thinking uh, uh, about it. Uh, um, let's go either way. I, I, I want to know how expensive it is. To hire someone? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, you, you look around the tavern uh, and just in that dark alleyway outside, you get the sense that there are people that travel through here either to other lands or to castles and Tillin itself available to guard caravans uh, and companies, travelers, merchants, and you think you could hire them. And from the looks of it, you have everything from a uh, well-equipped uh, rider with a horse to someone with armor and weapons and martial skill to rabbles of peasants that desperately need a few copper coins. But, um, not, in, but not in equal measure. There are far more peasants begging outside than there are trained riders ready to ride into battle. Not sure. I'm much. I have much more uh, coin than the rest of y'all, but I will uh, hire one of the peasants to do to uh, hold a torch for our group as we travel into the castle. Okay. Um, uh, roll a a d100, please. Uh, that is a fourteen. A 14, um, you succeed, uh, and then roll a d6. Six. A six. Uh, there are a group of six peasants. They are all brothers. They all know each other. They beg you to take you. To, 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 they, they, they say they'll carry your stuff. They're barefoot. Uh, they look uh, emaciated. Uh, one of them looks really old. Um and they're they're eager to just carry things for you and to help you. They they look uh, teeth are falling out of their face. Uh, what's your charisma score? Uh, Prodary is a fifteen charisma. Yeah. 
Uh, if you would like uh, to bring this peasant rabble with you, uh, I think you can easily accommodate six of them. Uh, they are available essentially for like a few silver pennies. Okay. Um, seeing their state, Pretoria will <laughs> offer them a uh, a full gold coin. For their services, so they, they, may they drop to them? their knees. <laughs> one of them holds it up, and then another one. They, they they smack off one of their 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 little jaunty hats. And they like pay some respect, boy. It's a gold coin. And they just they like bow and worship to this gold coin. They've never seen anything like it. We'll uh will offer them words of warning, saying where we go is a place of danger. Um, your lives are not worth this coin. And I will try to protect you as best I can, but I, I do not know what lies ahead, and I cannot ensure your safety. The the youngest lad of the bunch is like, no, I'm pretty sure my life's worth that gold coin. Oof. <laughs> man, man, life's rough in this overpriced town. Just <laughs> Yeah, these are probably vagrants that are, like, transient. They're moving through. Uh, We'll take three of them. But I'll I'll give um, I'll give five silver to the other three. Um, or th so there's five six of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll give five silver to the three to um, please um, get yourself a meal and uh, room and board. Take care of yourself. I'll give the other five silver to. Um, your three commands here at the end of their work. Um, yeah. So they say, uh, th they go, uh, oh, light bless you, sir, light bless you, and they run off. So you said you're going to take three, right? Yes. Can, uh, here, you need to write down the following things, okay? Um, uh, their morale value, their base value is eight. This is a stat you will now track. Morale value eight, okay. Uh, when I call for a morale check for them, you will roll 2d6, and you do not want to roll over that. You want to roll under it. Um, if they, if you roll over it, they're going to do something stupid in the worst possible moment. Okay. And each time that that happens, you'll subtract a point from that, and it will go down. It almost never can go up. Okay. Okay. And their names are Ernalt, Ricardus, Mayhu. That's it. That's those are their names. Ricardus the and Mayhu. Ernault, okay. Ricardus and Mayhu. The spelling doesn't matter. They can't spell okay. anyways, and uh, or read. And they each have one hit point, and armor class ten. Okay. All right. Um, so, anybody else want to find anybody to hire? Is there anyone that looks like? Um... They know around, they're not aware around a, a, a club or a, or a sword or something? Absolutely. Yeah, if you, uh, uh, do you search around for somebody that looks like they're competent with a weapon? Yes. Okay. You take about an hour searching around town. Uh, well, actually, I should, I guess we should roll for it first. Uh, roll a D100. You want to get at least an 80 or below to find s some people that can... We'll say each person's kind of, ooh, is that a zero okay. one? Nice. Yes. That's a natural one. Holy smokes. Um, you find uh, the best in town. In fact, there is a group, there's a mercenary company that you encounter specifically looking for people to hire them. Um, the mercenary company has everything from armed riders that are mounted with chain and sword to crossbowmen, trained bowmen, heavy footmen, and light footmen. Um, so chainmail to leather to bows. In this game, of course, uh, bows can fire twice per round. Uh, however, they expect to be paid up front for their pay. Uh, the pay is complete. They expect no amount of treasure, but they will get half XP. Um, and um, you basically can pick any of those kinds. A rider, crossbowman, bowman, heavy footman, or light footman. And uh, you find them in that dark alleyway. Uh, the uh, mercenary company, they've been given leave. And they are um, giving Pascal Levesque a hard time 
uh, and really tearing up the establishment. So hiring a few of them would please please the establishment too. How much uh, do, do the do uh, the light and heavy footmen uh, cost? And for this, I actually have to look in the rules. I didn't think I would do that tonight. Okay, a um, let's see here, a um, let's see, upkeep for a man at arms, uh, operating in the field, it'd be two point five gold pieces. Uh, for a cavalry trooper, it would be uh, about four gold pieces. For an archer, it's about. Oh wait, no, this is separate. It's a uh, twenty-six. I gotta bring out a calculator. Calculator. So for a rider, it's twenty-six divided by four is six point five gold pieces. But all of them are less than 6.5, so without looking, kind of fudging it, and I can give you the exact number, but a bowman is about four or something, and a, uh, a heavy footman's like three, and then a regular footman's like 1.5 or something. I'll do the math, depending on what you want there. I'm gonna get one light footman. Very well. Um, uh, a light footman is 10... Plus four is fourteen. Divided by four, uh, you would need to subtract three point five gold for a light footman. They ha a light footman has um, a spear, a short sword, a shield, and leather armor. So I believe they have AC thirteen. Oh, go ahead. Uh, they they they're not one point five gold. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's see here. Household. Okay, I did it wrong. It's 12. 12 divided by 4 is... No, I have that wrong. It's 3 gold. It's 3 gold for a light footman. 3.5 for a heavy footman. I'm almost... almost oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. I have it wrong here. I have it wrong. They have a separate wage here. Uh, sorry. A light footman is 3 gold. A heavy footman is 5 gold. I, I missed this. I was using Swords and Wizardry. They did the math for me. If uh, I, I, I've only got two gold left, so um, Prodery will Prodery will cover the cost for any of the hirelings if you don't have enough. Yeah, I, I'll I'll put them down for at least a one guy like uh, uh, to help to help us defend ourselves. Okay. Uh, so you uh, you hire Philippe. Philippe, uh, he um, he's a little bit old, but he um, he smiles. Uh, he's got just a mustache, uh, and he he says, "Ah, these lands, I have uh, I know these lands well. I'll be able to even help you. I might know some things, uh, but uh, I'm your I'm at your service." And he bows. And um, what's your charisma score? seven a seven okay uh philippe's morale is six and you would subtract one on a 2d6 roll to get wait that doesn't make any sense let's see here morale check 2d6 below the morale rating that doesn't make any sense well I think I, I think I told you to add one, but you want to subtract one, AJ, Prideri. But anyways, you tell me to subtract. Oh, great. Okay, um, you will add one to the result, um, uh, Godric, and uh, your morale value is. You said you had what is your morale value again, or charisma? Seven. Seven. Okay. Uh, your morale value for um, for Philippe is a six. And each time I ask for the morale value, it'll go down by one. Um, they have a spear D6, short sword D6, and uh, armor class um, uh, armor class 13. 
And let's figure out their hit points here. They have one HD, which is four hit points. All right. Um, everybody's been like looking for fellow adventurers to go with you. Uh, Thetis, do you want to try to look for people? Yeah, sure. I'll try to see if I can find a bodyguard. I think I'll, uh, yeah, I'll look for like similar men of arms and see if I can find anybody. Uh, roll a D100, please. Great. Did uh, did you want me to cover the cost of that hireling, or did you have it? He just needs one gold piece. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll give him that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was that a thirty-one or a thirteen? Either way, that 13. passes. Uh, but that will determine. And you're looking for a, a light footman as well. Uh, yeah. Why not? Very well. Uh. And you just want one, or do you want more? Just in case, let me just bring two. Just All right. One flip, one more. Roll a d6 to see if you can find a company willing to part with two. All right, you are. There's four of them together. Two of them are willing to be hired, uh, and um, their wages, two of them together, would be six gold pieces. Ah. Uh, I'll... Yeah, sure, why not? I'll go ahead and get six gold pieces per day, or is it just up front and then it's every adventuring day? It's it's yeah, it's up front for each day. So but that'll be for this whole adventure. Um, um and uh their names are Erart. Uh Erart uh seems sullen and quiet, with greasy black hair. And then there's a woman named Vivian. She's a stocky woman with a scowling, droopy face. And she's like, oh, I guess I'll have to go. Oh, that, I, I got to do everything around here. Blah, 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 blah. And she just grumbles to herself. Uh, Erart. Oh, better, be, yeah, oh. better be safe than sorry. So I'll hire them. <laughs> so uh, the spear they have, they can attack from the second rank. Uh, they have, uh, it does D6 damage. Short sword does D6 damage. They have 13 armor class. Erart has 10 hit points. And Vivian has two hit points. And I apologize, uh, Philippe has eight hit points. Um, Godric. Eight? Eight. Nice. Yes. Erart has ten hit points and Vivian has two. All right. Uh, so you have a company to uh, of, of guards to uh, at your command. Oh, and also your morale. That's right. So what is your charisma score? Um, Check that. Thetis. It's nine. Nine. Very well. Uh, let's see. Nine. You have morale seven for both of them. And this is a score that both of them have, okay? All right. And you will not add or subtract anything to a 2d6, but every time I call for a morale check, you will not want to roll over a seven. Uh, and you'll subtract one each time I call for it. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you will... Uh, Nostromo... Um, uh, Godric, is there anything else that you all would like to do in town the night before your adventure? Uh, I'm gonna give the the <clears throat> if there is okay with it, I'm gonna give uh, two large sacks to to the the hireling that that is not the, the hirelings that are not carrying a torch. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, your dinner at the Black Comedian is cherry crumble with lamb. It's delicious. Comes with a room. I lied. It's three gold pieces. It's not. It's not two. Sorry, I'm, I have new prices. I'm used to a different I'll, thing. I'll, I'll deduct two from me to pay for theirs. I appreciate that. Um. Yeah, and uh, with that, uh, you go to bed for the evening, preparing uh, to to rest what you can for your adventure tomorrow, and then. You get up, and it's a beautiful spring day in Southern Franc. And, um... Uh, as you approach, uh, you, you see that the castle itself is also beautiful. Um, in a kind of a high medieval style, with uh, uh, crenellations and high parapets that uh, tower 40, 50, and 60 feet into the air. Uh, a gleaming banner 
its uh, its mast off to one side, having long been weathered. You can tell even from where you are that its yards and gardens have been untended and overgrown. Uh, the grass on the outside of the bottom part of the fortress has not uh, been tended in a long time. It has a muddy, swampy moat that goes all along its base. And um, you approach via the entrance initially, and uh, the fairy lights continue until you get closer. Uh, so to make sure we have Cleric, right? Uh, do you have any magic or no? Uh, I'm a sworn man to God, but he's not granted me any powers okay. yet, though I can turn the undead. Okay. And our druid, do you have magic as well? Uh, yes. Uh, um, I could detect magic, ma magic stuff. Okay. Uh, I don't know that there's need for that now. I just wanted to make sure that I had that information in my head. Um, so for the torch bearers, I'll have one of them 10 feet in front of us, one of them in the midst of us, and one of them 10 feet behind us. Okay. So you've got some, some light and stuff. Uh, of course, it's daytime so far, but uh, you yeah, can okay, let me know when you want a <laughs> torch to be lit. Yeah. Um, so I hand it over to, um, uh, to Godric. Uh, Godric, uh, you're outside the gates uh, at the gatehouse of, gatehouse of this place. You can see ahead of you, um, even though it's not shown on the VTT here, that the inside edges of the, uh, the battlements on either side of the gatehouse are ruined. Um, and uh, there's rubble that goes down on either side. Um, and uh, additionally, um, Godric, please roll a d6. Six. Uh, Godric, you see movement among the tops of these battlements. Mm. It's clear to you that they were people that were watching your approach. Are they hiding? Um, you, it's it seems like they were hiding from you. Yeah, but they saw they saw you coming. Yeah, and then you saw like a couple of them dart off the top of the battlement somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna warn the group. Okay. And uh, what do you do next? Where are we? Oh, I see it. I see the gatehouse. Yeah, I'll describe a little bit more here. Uh, so you're here at this gatehouse. Uh, I'll kind of go back to the picture and show that too. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, is there a VTT I'm supposed to be in? Or... Oh gosh, did I did I not send you a link? I did not, did I? No. <laughs> uh, let me send you a link. <laughs> this whole time there's been a VTT, oh no. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, I, well, I have the other game open right now, so. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's not that's the my game. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe leave that open because of the character sheet, but yeah, here's the VTT. Okay. That's my fault. Uh, let's see here. Um. So, um, there's a, um, there is a moat, like, right here, and, uh, it's muddy and swampy on either side, but, uh, but you also have, uh, uh, untended, um, cracked earth and grassy weeds and thorns you know that uh to the left and to the right but then you have the gatehouse and it is um destroyed the the two battlements on either side this is the top down view 
and uh, uh, up in, t in developments where this uh, uh, where it seems to be uh, uh, some some people watching yes yeah they're uh, that's right they're they're like up in the battlements in fact the the ones you see that seem to dash away were two people up at the top of this battlement here okay uh um I'm thinking about maybe going to the to the road to the south uh, I, I, I don't like that the, the, there's already people here uh maybe we should check out the this side road it seems to lead into the the castle as well all right what do you all think of that seems reasonable yeah. Right. Choices are either, like go directly to the place where the people saw us, or try to take a side passage. They might know we're here, but at least we could try to like sidetrack them, maybe. All right. Sorry, I just gotta. Um. Okay, yeah, I have this right. There's just something weird. I was just checking here. Okay, so let's do it. We're gonna journey down this side road here. Sixty feet. I believe the base movement rate is nine, so there's one turn. Um, Godric, roll a d6, please. Oh, no! One. Um... Yeah, actually, let me do this, too. Oh, dear. Okay, so, um, um, you hear grumbling noises and moaning. <laughs> Um, and there's like these shambling bodies that are rushing towards you all. Uh, I say rushing, but they're moving slowly. Uh, but um, you can see uh, uh, it looks like um, 
They're making wheezing noises and sucking sounds from old, dried, dead flesh that are sticking to parts of what used to be lungs. It seems like they're still trying to breathe, despite whether or not it actually does any good anymore. Some of them are missing feet, but they still stab their uh, their rotted, um, uh, broken bones into the ground and lope towards you as fast as they can. It looks like they're reaching towards you. They're about um, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet away. Um, Godric, what do you, what do you guys do? Being a man of God and seeing the undead before my eyes, like, are they clearly undead or are they just like skeletal, like type of creatures? Can I see that they're, uh, like, there's type of skeletons or anything like that? They look uh, quite undead. They look mostly like skeletons with patches of flesh and meat still attached in places. Right, so I guess I just offer up my services as I step forward. I just tell the others, it doesn't work, prepare to run. As I step forward, and I will try to see if I get tip to turn them. Okay. Given their distance, there can be one attempt to turn, and then they'll be within melee range, and we would move to the combat procedure in range, if that's what uh -huh. do you... And, but it's not a bad plan. I just wanted to say, is that oh, what... Okay. Yeah, is that uh, what you all would like to do, uh, Godric? How many how many fighting people do we have? Yeah, actually, let me put your tokens on here. Um, when you explore the dungeon, I'll usually have like one token just to keep it simple. But uh, and usually I'll move to a different battle mat to depict you all. But uh, you have so including our so sorry, this is just like going me off going heads, but including our hirelings and if we include everyone here, we technically have six people. Not counting the peasants who are held, like the torch holders. I I don't like this. That there's nine of them. No, how much? Eight of them. Not a fan of the numbers either. Um. I mean, we could try to go back the other way but uh then we'd have to we'd have to deal with whoever may be atop the uh, the tower or the uh, the parapets and whatnot battlements true and these things might chase us that's the other thing yeah I was kind of suggesting like for me to like make an attempt to see if we could at least reduce the numbers somewhat and then maybe have a better fighting chance if we have to run. At least, like, just see, like, I just go ahead and just reduce some of the numbers, just, like... But, uh, that's also just, like, for everyone to, like, prepare to run, just in case. Would I be able to throw oil at the same time that he's trying to turn? Um, I'm gonna say no, because, okay. uh, but, but... But yes, no, but yes. So what we'll do instead is we'll actually go into the combat procedure where you would just be able to do that anyway. You would actually do that first. And then he would do turn undead last, and then by the time they move to you, you'd be in combat. Same thing. All right. All right. Sounds like uh, uh, Godric. Uh, so trying to run away i will i will tell you my ruling on evasion the rules leave it up to me uh essentially if you're in combat i'll let them get a whack at you and then if you're able to basically like pass a check then you can just get away entirely otherwise they'll be able to re-engage each round and then you know but should be a normal combat round uh so it's like a check to be able to get away essentially um they get uh, if you're fleeing they have a bonus to attack you i think it's like plus two Retreating, oh, plus um, two to hit, and free attack. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking uh, 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 maybe we should flee. If you flee now, you're confident you could just get away, because they're slower than you. Um, it, if they pursue, then perhaps we could just do like kind of like a... We could pepper them with ranged attacks and soften them up and before finally closing the melee, if we can't kill them all. That's true. All right. 
Okay, so uh, you're gonna try to flee and then see what happens from there. So let's let's do that. There's ten minutes. Twenty minutes. Thirty minutes. Um, at this point, when you get back to the gatehouse, there are people out here to 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 greet you. Two humans, and they um, they come down and they say, "Lower your arms, travelers! Be behold." We have the bead on you. And they point up to the battlements and there are people pointing uh, with arrows at you. We mean you no harm for today. Uh, how do they look? Rascally. Like, uh, like ne'er-do-wells. Actually, I'll show you a nice piece of art of them. All right. Um... Uh, I, I, I'll ask him uh, um, who are who are they and uh, what wh what do we what do you want with us? I uh, let's say the one in the hat, okay, on the left. Uh, he takes off his hat and he flourishes into a bow and he says, "I am Gilbert Malivel. You may have heard of me, the Fox." Raises his eyes in a look of like, of course you've heard of me. Yeah. Yes, of course you've heard of me. These are my merry men. Now, it seems you have taken upon your your yourself. You are daring adventurers. And you have decided to come into my family's estate. Fear not. I welcome you inside. For a cost. And what is this fee we have to pay in order to venture inside? No fee. I see that you are daring adventurers anyways. I offer payment if you obtain my blacksmith's hammer. What, just a regular hammer? Oh no, it's a magical hammer. One of the finest blacksmith's hammers that has ever been forged in all the world. He points to, uh, to a shed nearby. He says, But for a group of daring adventurers like yourself, it should be no problem to obtain it. I will give you 50 gold pieces. How many are there here? How many what? Uh, of these uh, ah. th these guys there's uh, five on the ground and there's uh, seven, 17 total because there's a bunch of people with bows and arrows and then five of those are on the ground including the fox and, uh, but what stops you guys from, from going in and retrieving it yourselves you're, you're, there's lots of you Yes, why would I do that when I have daring adventurers like yourself? 
That is my cost if you wish to enter my family's estate. So, if we get the hammer, he gives us 50 gold, and that's, and he leaves us alone otherwise. That's, that's the, the, the whole of it? Yeah, he's, he's ad giving you admittance if you only retrieve his family's hammer. And if we come back empty-handed? Uh... Well, he'll, he said. Well, you say that in character. He says, "Well, then um, we will apprehend you, and you will pay in other ways." Hmm. Decide now. Stand and die. Leave, or accept my quest. Be all thing. I mean, we're not necessarily in any uh, position to bargain here, and yeah, if we because it's either these guys are trying to take on or the undead, which is a 50 50 chance from what I can estimate. But if all he wants is just the hammer, and if he doesn't mind us looting the other things, anything else we might find, I think. He might be trying to trick us, he might be doing something else, but honestly, I'd say we have a better chance inside the actual place than just trying to find a way around it. Alright, um... What do you think, Godric? Mm, I'm I'm open to go inside. I'm just a little bit uh, preoccupied because there's no gu guarantee to that they will let us go after. But maybe we find another exit. Indeed. Very well. They let you pass. You enter the grounds. I will describe what you see here. Uh, inside the grounds, you can see um, a um, a ritually fed rose garden behind parapets. A thicket near a garden lake, just like in that image, with a um, a little island in a pond. The statue of a maiden motioning forlornly toward it. A uh, a patch. Obviously for growing vegetables. A bit of other thickets and such. And then the guard post path from within the gatehouse. Further in to the, uh, to the castle. And here uh, you can see um, what would be the, uh, the stables. And this is the building he pointed toward right here. Where to next, Godric? Uh, um, he asked us to go somewhere specifically, so, some entrance specifically? Uh, yeah, he pointed toward this building. He said that was the smithy and uh, wanted you to retrieve the hammer. The whole south wall is a building, then? Uh, the whole... Uh, this, uh, this is kind of protruding... You know, uh, the, the these here, these th wait, say that again. It, it, is the whole the, the whole uh, uh, south wall the same building? Ah, no, it's um, it, these are buildings below the castle wall. There are multiple buildings. So this is a building, the one he pointed to. There's also a building here with two doors, and uh, another separate building here that you can see no door on the front side of it. Uh, they have arrow slits. That you can see. Well, let, let's get a little bit near this uh, building then. Very let's well. See if we can find an entrance. 
Uh, you get near the building, and uh, it looks like you see no entrances here on the wall. Uh, the only entrances you see are here on this this building that's sticking out. There's two doors here that are plain wooden doors with old rusted iron banding. All right. Um, left one or right or right one, guys. Um. Well, some of my fellow priests say the left hand is the devil's hand, so let's go to the right. <laughs> I like that just that reasoning. Um, does it does it look like they're still watching us from atop the parapet? Um, some of them are, but uh, but others are not. Others are on guard, and others are talking to one another. Uh, uh, right when it is then. Okay. You go inside and, uh, well, this is interesting, actually. Uh, here we go. Oh, it's dark inside. <clears throat> Open a wooden building. It's dark. Gesture for one of the torch bearers to come forward. <laughs> he nervously comes forward, ignites a torch. And you can see... The source of what smells so bad in here, this is a long, untended stable. And inside of the stable, uh, one of the walls has caved in, and uh, unnaturally alien large fat grub bugs this big are plopping out in the, the light. One of them falls onto its fat back and squirms with little legs, you know, hundreds of little legs underneath it. Um, they scurry off than when the light is shined on them. But these bugs are like this big. And uh, underneath the pile of refuse, a com combination of uh, horse manure and fallen wooden paneling, is a uh, half of a horse's saddle. And otherwise, you can see that here on the east side is another wooden door, and then two wooden doors to the west. Uh, did not like the look of those bugs. <laughs> uh, are there any, like, above us or anything? You look above you, uh, it's got, a, a, a beams that have not been paneled or closed, and then it goes up into a, a wooden ceiling, uh, that's just wooden boards, um, which don't hold out the weather well. These are stables. Now, the, the buildings to the left and right look like proper buildings. They look like they're closed with mud and daub and wood and stuff, so. All right, uh, yeah, go ahead. So so the building they want, want us to go in, I'm, I'm guessing it's behind one of these two doors. It's the right direction. Although, um, well... I'm going to close the, the door. All right. Close the door. You, you guys want to maybe take a peek on the east door? Could be something interesting there. Uh, yeah. Do you want to have one of us or do you want to have one of the the footmen, foot soldiers do it? <laughs> mm, let, yeah, let's have a, a, a footman do it. All right. You have... Uh... Philippe, Erart, or Vivian go? This is a question for, uh, this would be, because, uh, what is it, uh, two of them, yeah, so Erart and Vivian is for Thetis, or Philippe is for, um, Godric. Which, and Godric, which one do you want to send? Or Philippe is, is, it's okay. Uh, Philippe, he says, I remember passing by this when I was a young lad. These, this castle, he smiles. Eh, I never got to come inside until now. Ah, if it were only in better times. He takes his spear, uses it as a walking stick, and strides forward. He looks back and he says, Would you like me to open the door, Master? Yes, please. Very well. And he uh, opens the door, 
takes a look inside with the available light and he says, um, let's see. He, uh, he says, ah, bonjour. I don't mean anything. Please, uh, please. I don't mean to disturb you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Closes the door back. <laughs> Comes back to you all and he says, um, Masters, there are seven skeletons in there with armor and weapons. And they were playing, uh, look like cards or, or some game of chance. And they looked somewhat surprised, uh, though I could not see in their uh, black eye sockets exactly how they felt about the matter. Is there any way to bar the door to the east? Uh, what do you think? I mean, what are you thinking? There we go. I'm thinking I don't want them to come in, uh, even if they're not... Uh... No, 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 to bar the door, but yeah, yeah, so you're thinking you don't want them to move, but... Uh, through there, how 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 might you bar the door? Okay, could could there be a a piece of a beam uh, in in here or or something similar to to a plank or something like that? Sure. So you're gonna take one of the uh, uh, pieces of wood that fell in and you're gonna pull it out and use it to jam the door. Is that right? Uh, yes. Okay. You do that. You jam the door. And um, you're pretty confident that it's going to take quite a bit of force now to get that door open from, from that side. Um, the saddle then tumbles out uh, from the... And it makes some noise. And uh, from the, uh, <laughs> the wood and uh, stuff that falls out, uh, there are saddlebags in the saddle that tumbles out with uh, all the junk that gets let loose. Do they look full? Um, yeah. Yeah, the saddlebag does look full. Uh, shall we check it out? Maybe there's something valuable inside. Sure. All right, who opens it? Uh... Derry can do it. He'll kind of uh, nudge it with his foot and then kind of try to open it and prop it open with his sword. All right. Uh, you uh, nudge it with your foot and uh, it feels a little heavy or at least bulky and then you hear sloshing inside of it. And then it, you said you're going to take your sword and open the panel to see what's in it? Yeah. Okay, you take your sword and you open it. You can see that there are a bunch of empty wine bottles. But one bottle has been unopened. There is a tawdry and nasty uh, depiction of a, uh, a mademoiselle on it that appears to be on fire. Um, almost like, a, you know, uh, the silhouette. And then she's like on fire and then she's drinking something. And um, it's a unopened bottle of wine is what it appears to be. Maybe worth some coin back at the uh, the end. Yeah. Um, all right. So um, back to you, Godric. Which way now? Let's take a look at the door to the west. Yep. Who opens the door? Or do you open the door? Yeah. What do you do at the door? Let let, let Philippe open it. All right. Philippe, he's like, hmm. Going to pick me to always open the doors, eh, master? All right. Opens the door. And um, <clears throat> opens the wooden door, and inside, uh, a rush of heat billows out from the open door into your face as you open it. Um, the various items in the room are disorganized in disarray, much, much like the rest of this place. But there is a forge in here. 
and uh, a, a wave of heat and smoke smashes into your face as soon as you open the door because the forge is hot and active and sparks fly into the air from, from ingots being struck. And an iron hammer that is like not held by a hand but striking into iron ingots from an active forge stops, floats in the air, turns towards you, kind of turns to the side as if it's cocking its head, and then rushes towards you really fast. Leap, and then we have Thetis, and we got probably a couple behind Philippe. I'm assuming you're using them as meat shields, and then you've got your cowardly torchbearers back here, and you've got a hammer that rushes toward Philippe, and uh, we are in the combat procedure. So at the top of the round, declare spells. Um, I should also describe the rest of the area in case you can use it. It's a large iron hammer. It's probably like this. It's big. And uh, floating in the air, it flies four times the speed of, the, the, of your regular speed. Um, there are crude iron objects strewn about the room, including nails, iron sheets, horseshoes, a fire poker, and two metal flasks. Just strewn. And then there's a bunch of stuff that's ruined, just scattered everywhere. Uh, the whole room is no more than 20 feet across. Uh, let me get like a, this so that we have, there we go. All right. So the first step is top of the round for combat. Uh, he was not surprised. The hammer's not surprised. What is it doing? Goodness. Okay, maybe that'll live. Okay. Uh, any spells? No? Okay. Uh, uh, Godric, roll a d6 for initiative, please. You have to beat a four. You got a three. The, five, the hammer's able to act first. Um, uh... Anyone firing a missile can do so now. Or, I'm sorry, it's going to get to move first. I'm wrong. Come on. Why is it not letting me control it? Oh. oh okay, I see. All right, the hammer flies toward Philippe and attacks. Has a plus two to hit. What is Philippe's AC? It's 13, I think. So uh, the hammer flies past, Predur or past uh, Philippe and misses him. Um, all right. Anyone uh, firing a missile, you have a chance of hitting Philippe. If you miss, it'll hit him. Does anyone want to fire a missile, or do you not want to take the risk? I just do have a question about uh, turning on Zen. Would it count? Would it count as a spell or the own separate action in terms of uh, combat? Or because my question is, does this look like it's a ghost wielding the hammer, or is it just like the hammer? Hammer itself is. Uh, is it just uh, the hammer itself that seems yeah. to be attacking? Yeah, in this case, you're not sure, but um, but this is a situation where you would have to find a way to figure that out. You're not sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't want to try to hit Felipe. I don't trust myself with this link that much, so I'll just... There is a bunch of undead in this general area, so I'll try, I'll try my chances and try to see if I can invoke the power of my god to try to see if I can turn this, maybe. You, oh, you're going to try to turn this thing. Okay, yeah, all right. So you 
uh, you had to have declared that as a spell, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll, that's I'll, okay, I'll though. I'm confused though. about that because it's... Yeah, right. Is it a spell or is it a class ability? You're right. Uh, and, and that's actually not clear in the rules, but that's okay. So you declare... Because like, I know the different games right. they put it as like, it's either like a spell thing or a class ability thing. So it's You're right. Thing. Yeah, so uh, that's okay. Yeah, so uh, you, you declare turn undead. Uh, is anyone else moving their token or any of their hirelings? If you, do the, if you are, do that now, including the, the hirelings that you have. Yeah, uh, 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 which one is Philip? Uh, he's the one right next to it. Okay. I'm gonna move right between these two guys. Alright. Uh, Pradari will also move, um... He'll move... While you're thinking about it, what about your other hirelings, uh, Thetis? Uh... Yeah, I'll just go ahead and order them to those two. Just go, you two, stop that hammer! <laughs> All right. By the way, there are grappling rules in Swords and Wizardry. Uh, oh. So if anyone tried to grab it, you can do that. Or you can attack it. So you, But you have to announce it as a melee attack if you're going to try to grapple. Right. So, okay, so uh, everybody's moved, uh, except Perdiri. What are, what are you going to do, Perdiri? He's going to move in as well. All right. Okay, so everybody moves, no missile fire, it, uh, it's not going to move, and now you are in melee combat with this hammer that's flying around the room, and everybody's dodging it, and um, uh, at that point, uh, is it gets a, let's see, it already attacked, uh, it missed, um, uh, it is going to try to, uh, Philippe is going to try, well, no, no, it's up to you all, uh, yeah, what do you want to do, attack, grapple, um, yeah, those are your two options. Uh, so if we try to grapple, does that take, uh, does that count as, like, a single attack of all the attacks you can make, or is that, like, your, your whole turn is spinning, spinning grappling? Yeah, that would be, like, your attack. You would make a, to hit roll to see if you can do it, and then there will be a contest to see if, if the object is grappled. Okay. Um. I don't know what everyone else is going to do, but I think Pradari going to try to grapple this thing. All right. Uh, what about you, Godric? And I want to try and, and uh, stab where where a person will be if he was wielding this thing. All right. Roll to hit. Okay. Combat spear. Okay, you miss, but you do stab where a person should be. You are certain that there's no person there. Um, okay. Roll for turn undead uh, for uh, Thetis. Okay, so just double checking out the rules. It's oh, it's two d ten. Okay. I think that tells if it happens or not, and then two d six is the number. If I have that right. All right, and then on your chart, what does an eleven give you for hit 11. dice? Uh, as a first level cleric, I can turn skeletons. All right, nothing seems to happen, uh, even though you uh, hold up your holy symbol and chant uh, and cry out. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Perderi, uh, roll to hit. Um, okay, so it's going to be d20 and plus one to the results so of 19. Okay, so you got a 19, so that does hit. Now, how many hit dice do you have? I have three. Three. It also rolls three. Roll three d6s. It also is going to roll three d6. You want to beat an 11. Oh. What about uh, me? <laughs> uh, let's see here. All right. Um, it's you're, you're equal, so uh, nothing happens. You uh, try to grab hold of it, and it gets free. Uh, roll a d uh, any spells. Probably not because you know turn undead doesn't work. But uh, d six. Yeah, that was kind of like my shot there. So I was like, yeah. okay. Uh, Godric, roll a d six for initiative again, please. Okay. Um, oof! It's able to act first again. It flies again toward Philippe. It hits Philippe. Uh, let's see. It does. Uh... Does five damage to Fleep. 
and Philippe is struck, ah, and he gets thrown against the wall, you know, and uh, some of the, the wood shelving and stuff, he smashes into it, makes awful noise. Um, I'm also going to roll for an encounter. This will be the only one for the noise, though. Okay, that's good. Nothing happens there. And then uh, the hammer recoils back. Um, let's see. Uh, any missile fire you would hit your friends, probably. So any other melee attacks? No melee it's, attacks. Ada's just, uh, uh, just sitting in the back, just yelling at her as far as uh, hirelings, like, just hit the damn thing. Just get it out of the air. Okay. Uh, roll for their attacks. Roll uh, 2d20s. That hits. Ooh. And that hits. Ooh. So you can go ahead and roll uh, 2d6 for your spears. Uh, or short swords, whatever. They're, probably short swords in this case. Actually, it has yeah. to be short swords by the rules. Uh, seven damage. Uh, you strike the thing. And uh, weirdly, it like slumps out of the air onto the ground and is quivering on the ground, looking like it's about to get up again. What do you all do? I want to try and grapple it. Okay, you jump on top of it and grapple it. It's quivering underneath you, but you have control of it. What do you do next? Uh, it, it, it's still trying to get... It, it, uh, it, it's like it's been stunned and, and it's about to like try to start flying around again soon. I'm... I'm I'm gonna uh, take out my rope and and uh, make a knot around the head of the of the hammer. Nice, you do that. You uh you take a take your take your rope and you tie a knot around the head of it and tie it to you or your backpack or equipment or whatever. And this thing is just like fighting and vibrating, but it's on you and it can't get away now. All right. You have uh, the the hammer of the Malaval family. That went better than expected. <laughs> I think it's fair to say we can't ask uh, Philippe to open door doors, so I think we just gotta. Yeah. All right. What do you, what do you all do next, uh, Godric? Should should we? Uh, take a look around, or should we just uh, bring this thing out uh, to the to Fox? Uh, I think if we bring it to him, that would signify kind of the end of our time here. And also, I don't trust them not to just attack us after we give it to him. So. Um, yeah, let me take that and clarify it just so we're... Uh, so you're thinking that we would get to the end when you all become exhausted for the day. You leave, and then just like as you're leaving, you're like, hey, here's your hammer, give me my money. That way you can try to get away. Is that the idea? Is is that how, like... Is that, like, reasonable for us to interpret it based on what we were told? Or... Oh, it's up to you all. But, uh, but I just want to make sure I understand your intention. Like, uh, you're saying... Go ahead. Like... That, that's that's kind of how I assumed that may be assuming too much, but that's kind of how I assumed it would be, though I guess they could clearly see us leaving this place, so... Well, what do you think, Thetis? I think they already kind of see us going there, they already pinpointed where, the, where exactly they wanted us to get it, so if we go anywhere else, they'll know, like, hey, we're not really going the place where they're supposed to be, so we're just kind of delaying it. <laughs> And if we yeah. do decide to go ahead and do it when we go like, explore the place and we're exhausted and we try to leave, the thing is now it probably may be, if they betray us, it may be a better idea to just get it out of the way now. That way we have a little bit more of a fighting chance if they do go back on us. Because we're exhausted, low on hit points, everything. They have an easier time just picking us off at the end of the day if we're all exhausted. That That is very fair. Very fair. I think that's probably the best bet. Um, the... The one mercenary you mentioned uh, having grown up here, would would I be able to ask him if he knows anything of this supposed lord? He says, ah, yes, I don't know all of the lords of the Malaval family very well myself, and as I said, I was a young lad when I came through here. Uh, but, um, 
who knows uh, if he's actually a lord of the Malaval family, uh, some black sheep or bastard son, or uh, or um, if he is actually a disenfranchised uh, inheritor of this place. I'm sorry, my lord. I I don't know. So, uh, uh, Godric, what do you think? Hmm. So far, options are, like, go right now and turn it in, or another option is, like, keep exploring and do it at the end. That's my understanding of what's on the table so far. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that they would notice if we go uh, somewhere else, too. Right. So maybe I'm think I'm I'm more inclined to go with them and, and just give them the hammer. Sounds good. You go back and um, a couple of them climb down, and then they motion for like ten more of them to climb down, and they they uh, hold arrows at you, you know, because you are armed people. And the fox comes down and he sees the hammer hopping off your back and he motions for several people to come by and like take a bag and, and a sack and stuff it in it, cut the cord on your back. And then they hand you a new rope. And then he hands you a bag of coins and he says, the fox is good on his word. The estate is yours to peruse. But only for three weeks. At most. And then they hop back up on the battlements and then go back to ignoring you. You have 50 gold pieces. Wow, well. Oh, he did seem fair enough. <laughs> Alright. I am yeah, curious though, like, why it's, why we say, like, we have three weeks to explore the place. Like, what were they planning after that? That's a good question. we ask them why why three weeks or... well they, they they leave they just like yeah. give you gold and then like run off with the hammer uh, i guess they got their own business still a uh, generous on three weeks i think we can clear this place out yeah uh real quick ross i uh, should have been here early to handle this but i was coming back from a uh, baseball game um I don't seem to have any equipment on my sheet. I'm trying to like update my sheet in this from my other character sheet, and I right. don't seem to have access to any equipment. Yeah, I'm really sorry. There's nothing in the compendium, so okay. I, yeah, it's a no problem, then. it's a new module actually. So gotta do it the old-fashioned way. You have to add it yourself. Yeah. How 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 do I add an item exactly? Uh... You go to equipment, you click on the plus where it says new item, and I do once not a new see that. Huh. Uh, like the new item option. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, it's to the right, uh, bottom. So first of all, on your character sheet, underneath oh. XP bonus, there's five tabs. You click on the center tab, equipment, bottom right, my, new my item. Dark mode's making it the same color as the background. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Godric, uh, where to next? Thinking going back to 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 the town. Um, what's, what's what's the name? Uh, Tour uh, Savoy. Uh, yes, tours on Savoy. Now, the way my game conventions work for these open table games is uh, you can return to the town with what you have. Uh, but as soon as you do that, it will end the adventure for the evening. Oh, okay. I mean, besides Philippe taking a blow, I say, like, we can explore a couple of rooms. See what we can find. Yeah. We can at least finish clearing out the stables, maybe some of the neighboring buildings. All right. Um, yeah, what do you, what do you think, um, uh, Godric, what, which way, and going back to the town is an option, but. Uh, 
Uh, I'll ask Philippe, uh, how is he feeling if he wants to uh, go to go on, or if he wants to maybe go back to the to town? He's limping a little bit. He's like, well, uh, m my lord, I, my, or sorry, master, I I think I can continue, but I uh, I would ask if perhaps I could just stay in just uh, behind a little bit. But uh, don't worry about me. All right, all right then. Did he have a spear or just a short sword? He has both. Okay. All right, where do we go? I mean, the only place we didn't really look at that closely was the uh, blacksmith place. I'm not sure if there is anything else there or not. We didn't really look around after we got the hammer either. That's true, yeah. But then I guess like the only other building next to it across from the stables has skeletons in there, and I don't think we don't disturb them. So I mean, yeah, we could check out the blacksmith and go to another place maybe. Godric. Mm. What about uh, taking a look uh, around the 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 interior? I see there there's there's some guard posts that maybe we could uh, see what's inside the main gate maybe we could find another door around uh, you want to head towards the guard posts like over here uh, sure yeah okay uh, let's do that there's 10 minutes there's 20 minutes. Um, suddenly this door opens. Somebody comes out. It, uh, it looks in every way like a, uh, like a drunk man in tattered robes. And he, uh, he staggers, he's got a bottle in his hand and he looks at you all and he, and, uh, his cow covers his face. You can only see part of his mouth, rotted teeth. His hands look like gnarled and white. And he looks at you all and he's like, You people look disgusting. <laughs> you have no sense of taste at all. What are you doing here in the castle? You look pathetic. What do you think? You look like adventurers? What are you? What is this? You should go. You don't... Get out of here. Get out of here. Get. What, uh, what does an adventurer look like? Not like that. I mean, like, look at this guy. Look at what, you've got an old man with you? Uh, with a walking stick? Uh, what is this, uh... What is this fat cleric here? What is the... What did he eat the other two clerics? What is this? Why, please, just go. It's pathetic. It makes me sad. Should we uh, ignore him? And <laughs> keep going? I don't know if ignoring's best. I think he seems... I mean, he seems able to be talked to. I don't know about reasoned with, but... <laughs> Should we maybe try to get more information? Maybe ask him about the the card game going on? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, we've been given, uh, leave of the grounds, but uh, I was wondering if you knew anything about the card game going on in the stables. 
seems uh seems maybe some people you might know are playing he shuffles up next to you puts his mouth right next to you know yours grabs you pulls you in and then you can see right here on his wrist exposed bone and uh and, and this like slimy clammy white hand is holding on to your armor and this rotted fetid smelling breath uh like wafts into your nose he's like I know that you probably can't count high enough to play that game. Oh, sorry, you don't know what counting is. There are these things oh. called numbers. I'm capable of counting. I'm no scholar, but reasonable reason enough. Um, but I was wondering if you uh, you knew about the the people playing it. Or perhaps of this place, we're fairly well. I'm, I'm wholly new to this place. So you came in here, and you don't even know who owns this castle. You don't even know what's going on here. What are you doing here? I think you should just leave. And he like shakes you and breathes into your face. Well, uh, very firmly place a hand on his chest <laughs> and be like who would you say uh, rules this castle we have been told by a man at the gate that he has claim of the, of the grounds wow you're really stupid that's all he says and then like and he like spits into your face like spittle you know from being close to your face from doing that. Not not like spitting, you know, but like just from, you know, he's talking and he's drunk and he spittle flies out of his mouth into your face. Maybe someone else should step in. <laughs> this just keeps happening and he basically like pushes or pushes around whoever wants to talk to him and tries to grab hold of their armor and just keeps calling them stupid and ugly. Right, so I think at this point I have I would say Thayer's just get, he, I get tired of this, or so I was like, okay, all right. Uh, Allard, Vivian, while we go ahead and peruse the grounds, will you just get this man off of us and try to keep him occupied, or just make sure he doesn't bother us? Uh, you say that to, uh, to Vivian. Uh, Vivian's like, why is it always going to be me? Always Vivian. Vivian's always, it's always Vivian this, Vivian that. And she, like, stumbles forward, and she tries to reach for the man, and the man is like, don't you dare, and he... Whips out a, a cane and smacks Vivian. I'm gonna see if the attack can happen. I'm gonna give them a chance, Vivian, a chance to be surprised or not. And I'm also gonna roll initiative. It's gonna be like a micro combat round. So he's able to attack first. Um, he hits, and uh, this cane takes on the ethereal light that surrounds the castle, and it strikes Vivian. Uh, and uh, Vivian, make a d20 save versus death for Vivian. Jeez. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, it's actually... Uh, see. Oh, is it not? Oh, is it something else? Is it? No, 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 was... no, 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 you're right. No, you got it. Uh... I just want to make sure I don't have this wrong. Oh, I think I do have it wrong. I think I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, it will still happen, though. So, uh, Vivian does not die. I was actually looking at another stat block. Okay. But it's still bad. She she suddenly, like, freezes, and her body just slumps to the ground like this. And she's, like, st still, uh, and, like, looking up with you wild eyes. And then he, uh, and breathes his drunk breath and this, like, billows out in this cloud out of his mouth. And I have to actually look this up. Um, I think everybody needs to make a save, though. Oh, boy. It's okay, so, yep. Just in case, I'll just go ahead and roll mine, just to see what the result is. Yep, okay, yep, no. Oh, what is going on? Uh, success. We, success. We got one fail. 
sorry, my entire page. I have like a little frowny face in the corner. I think I just like momentarily lost disconnect or lost connection. Uh, oh no. Uh, you can you should be able to reload. I can hear the music, but I can't see anything. You, you should be able to reload the browser and it should come back okay. But meanwhile, for uh, let's see, the person that failed, um, you yep. immediately turn and attack uh, Godric that you miss, uh, and um, you just start swinging wildly. Um, and then everybody else, I'm not going to roll for the others, and he daughters off. He's like, these stupid idiots. Idiots, I tell you. And he just, like, walks off if you let him. Okay. Well, I'm not sure I'm able to stop him, considering the fact I think at this point I'm still swinging around my mace, screaming incoherently, probably. Yeah. Uh, and, th and then that's it. You don't have to do any more attacks or anything. Okay. Actually, this goes on for a, a turn, so I actually need to roll. Okay, nice, you pass, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, okay, so a turn passes, and uh, now, uh, since you failed last time, they just uh, roll again to see if they can snap you out of it. At this point, it starts to clear, and they maybe are pinning you to the ground and keep trying to get you to snap out of what's happened. Okay, all right. Oof. Okay, another turn Ooh. passes. 20 Ooh. minutes pass, and Thetis is out of his mind uh, and making noise and stuff, and you're, like, trying to pin him to the ground and get him to snap out of it. Um, let's see. Yeah, three hit dice, two six. And it lasts for two hours. <laughs> Roll another save. Or you can tie him up and leave him, you know, uh, or you can try to think of a way to try to get him to snap out of this, like, all right, crazy so I state that this stuff is out. Technically, I could play as error. Oh, we could tie him up for his own safety. You pass after 30 minutes. Okay. So, 30 minutes pass of trying to get Thetis back, and you do finally. Awesome. I'll, I'll say, like, as I come out of my bed, this is okay. So, if we do encounter any more undead. Can we agree not to reason with them? <laughs> uh, that seems fairly reasonable. I'm quite opposed to the uh, a mockery of life that they are. That, and I don't want to ever go to. through that again. I can't say that I'm used to having undead talk to me, though. <laughs> yeah. It seemed unreasonable, but coherent. Um, we saw skeletons playing a card game. They seem to have left us alone for the most part. Place truly is strange. I think it's safe to say is if they don't bother us, we will not bother them. But if they bother us, then we have to bother them back. Seems fair. Um, around you, uh... Uh, Godric, uh, these are thickets of like overgrown vines and thorns. Uh, this path along what used to be cobblestone weeds have cracked through the surface to knee height in places. And um, you have the pond behind you. You have the uh, uh, you have the stables, the barracks, and the and the smithy that are buildings along the castle wall. And then uh, you have these two guard posts on either side of the main entrance gate. Where to? Hmm, should we go to the entrance gate? I kind of want to check out the open guard post that the one undead came out of to see like, what else is in his room, get more of an idea what else could be here. You, you could certainly do both, I think. Uh, so, um, this is interesting. Hmm. Uh. Okay. Uh, you go up. Uh, you go up and like peek around into the open door. Is that right? Yep. 
All right, you do that, uh, and um, roll a d6. Oh, no. Oh, God. Is that bad? That's really bad. Um, <laughs> all of a sudden, two halberds slash forward from the darkness, but you ah. definitely dodge both of them. Uh, and there are, um, there are uh, two uh, skeletons uh, that uh, take up their, their, their guard post, and they, uh, they come out to fight. Why is this? Oh my gosh, I'm like filling up the map with these things because it doesn't work. Okay. Declare spells. I'm obviously turning dead. I am already tired of this. Like, <laughs> the, dead, the dead be damned, go away. You can do that. Um, let's see. Uh, so that's the spell. Roll a d6 for initiative, please, Godric. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, my bad. I did that myself. That's all right. Got to beat a four, Godric. Six. All right. That yep. uh, you beat them. Um, movement. Uh, let's see. You are. If you tried to do missile fire, you have a chance of hitting your companion. Uh, so. Um, if you're moving to try to help your companion, what type of weapon are you using, um, uh, Thetis? A, a mace, right? Yes. Okay, only one person can attack next to you, because a mace requires five feet of clearance. Ah. So uh, one person can come up and join the fight if you wish. And two people behind, because a spear can attack from the second rank. Um, uh, uh, Godric and Philip have uh, spears. <laughs> okay. For, for Derry can push it. Godric and Philippe. All right. I'll give you kind of two tokens here, and then you'll bring Perdiri in to like be next to you. Um, so I'll just put you like this, and then you can assume that the rest are behind you because they can't fit in. Okay. So you move. Uh, they're already moved up, uh, and then you can do your melee attacks. Now, uh, obviously, uh, Thetis, you're not going to be doing a melee attack, uh, but uh, your companions can go ahead and resolve theirs. Okay. Your um, target is armor class 13 ascending for um, for your companions and right. for Perduri. And and... Is Vivian still out, or is it just Arahad? Because I think she was down, I think. Or... <laughs> yeah, uh, Vivian is... Uh, on the ground, uh, yeah, that's true. But just like her eyes are darting around, moving, but her body is still. I'm feeling I'm making a macro. Try one second. All right, so I'll, I'll go ahead and roll for Arard. Um. All right, what do we got here? Let's see. We got a thirteen. Uh, hits and a 11 does it's not a, hit. It's 11 plus 1. Uh, okay. The 13 hits. Uh, what about uh, Godric? The Godric's uh, or the two uh, companions, yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. Alright. And I think there's one other companion, right? Yeah, uh, Philippe. Okay, Philippe, yeah. Philippe, we'll see. Oof. Oof. Oh, dang it. Okay, so... Are these, uh, are these one-hit dice enemies? They are one-hit dice enemies, so if you're level three, you can attack two... one more. You can attack one more. Because there's two of them. You can attack, uh, yeah. Okay. That hits. Okay, yeah, you okay. can... So you and, um, you and, uh, Erard can roll for damage. Six total damage. All right, that is more than enough to kill both of them. So you smash them. You don't even have to raise your holy symbol. You slay uh, uh, your first undead, unholy creatures, Thetis. 
They warned me about these things, but I didn't realize how horrible they truly were. Ugh. Um, if you, let's see. Yeah, there's nothing of interest inside. They're pretty barren. Just seats, um, places like watch, you know, watch stations for these guards to sit at. If you look in the other one, it's barren as well. There's nothing inside except a skeleton that does not come to life and seems to not be animated by any evil powers. They have nothing what? of value on them. <laughs> Where did the drunk one go? Uh, he went in this uh, main door here and then oh, closed okay. it behind him. Are their, uh, their halberds uh, functional? Um, you think that uh, you could use them, uh, but as weapons, they would probably shatter. They're, they're, they're not of good quality. But you could use them if you needed to pry something or jam something or, you know, whatever. Okay, I was thinking for the, uh, the second rank people, but yeah, they're, they're on their, uh, their end, then yeah, probably not. All right. Um, uh, Godric, where to next? Uh, are, are, are these creatures carrying a, some some pouch or container or, or something like that? Uh, they have nothing of value on them, unfortunately. Well, uh, then I think we can go on to the main gate. Okay. I want to say before Alba, if they just must move to the gate, I want to at least put Vivian in a safe place. When we come back out and get her, uh, <laughs> probably bring her back to house. I want to put her at least in the guardhouse, like out of okay. the sight at least. She has a terrified look on her face as you drag uh, Vivian uh, into the guardhouse. I assume you close the door, maybe give oh, her yeah. a light, jam give it her the halberd or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There we go. All right, you come to a uh, uh, a main double door, um, an entrance. There are, um, yeah. What do you do? Godric will open it. Okay. I open the main doors and. Uh, uh, I think your light would have went out by now, but I'm not going to be a pedant. Uh, I'm assuming that you probably doused your light. So you probably have like another two or three rounds, three rounds, I'll say. Okay. So <clears throat> this passage is about 60 feet long, 20 feet wide, and it's covered on either side with murder holes. The far end is another double door, and uh, there's a, a door to the right, and... Um, as soon as you open the doors and your light is cast on this dank and long abandoned hall, you uh, you hear a voice that booms out. Welcome to your doom, interlopers. <laughs> what is with these people? In the <laughs> well, that was our job to be making threats. <laughs> All right, uh, Godric, where to next? Was that the voice of the drunk, the, the the drunk man? It did not sound like the drunk man. Yeah. Okay. Um, well. Um, uh, I I uh, I'm afraid that uh, if we go, if we rush in, maybe someone will shoot at us from the murder holes. Godric's gonna go go near this one here, and he's going to he's going to put his shield, his wooden shield, uh, in front of it, see if something shoots out. You uh, come up, put your wooden shield next to it. Nothing happens. As you come into the uh, the, the 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 corridor here, you can see that there are scraps of uh, bones and the remains of armor that litter the full floor. Definitely does not seem like a welcoming place to go 
Um, there's a door in the middle on the right. Uh, yes. And Godric, roll a d6, please. Two. Okay. <clears throat> um, outside, you hear growling again. <laughs> coming from this direction. And the gurgling and the gasping and wheezing noises of things that should no longer be breathing, at least pretending to breathe. It sounds like those things are coming up this path from behind you a couple of dozen feet away. Uh, let's let's close the door. Yeah. You close the door. Can it be barred? Uh, how do you bar it? Uh, is there maybe a beam specifically for that purpose around? Hmm. Uh, there are scraps of armor and bones. Um, you could try to jam it in places with bones, uh, but. Um, it would not be as effective as like iron spikes that could I, permanently jam it, but it would hold something off for a while. I have uh, spikes and a uh, a hammer. If you spiked the door, they would have to. That would jam the door. Like they wouldn't be able to get through. Would you like me to do that, or? Uh, sure. Yes. Okay. So I'll use. A couple spikes and hammer them in place. The doors can't open. Let me mark those off. You do that. Uh, it's uh, the, the door is spiked. Eight. Okay. Um, Godric, where to next? Think this will be the safest route. Um, All right. What do you do at the door? By By the way. It, before that, if I put my head near the murder hole, do I hear something? Hmm. So he's spiking the door. Uh, you're going to try to listen at the murder hole, see if you can hear anything. That's going to be a listen check. It's going to take a turn, but everybody else can do something on this turn. So you could also listen over at the door. Uh, you could um, check the door for traps, you know, like you could do all the things here if you want to split everybody up and have them do things. Only the characters. I'd say, like, the only thing I'd probably be doing is checking, uh, using my own shield and just checking the murder holes with the, seeing if there's anything I can see past them, if there's, okay, hear anything moving behind them, just to make sure that no one is, like, trying to take a crack, crack shot at us. Gotcha. Uh, Godric, roll, uh, actually, I'm sorry, let me roll the d6, because you won't know. I'm gonna roll it on my end here. Um, okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Thetis, you check all the murder holes, and you uh, carefully investigate them, you know, wondering if you're going to get shot at the next one and check it and check it. Uh, you're not able to see from the murder hole anything very well from the to the other side, uh, but uh, but you're confident after checking them, no one seems to be shooting you. Um, and uh, meanwhile, um, you, uh, Perderi, you uh, hammer the, the front door shut and Godric, uh, you listen at the murder holes on this side and you uh, you don't hear anything. Then let's get the door open then. Should we check it first? Uh, sure. Well, if you check... Anyone, oh, yeah, go ahead. If we're, if we're not a thief, how does that go for like checking for traps? Yeah, you can do that. Um, now, I'll just tell you, gen looking at the door, you don't see anything obviously wrong with it. It just looks like a wooden, normal wooden door in a nice castle. Uh, if you want to check it for traps, it takes a turn. It takes 10 minutes. That means an there's another check to see if there's monsters. Other people can do other things in those 10 minutes. Um, I will roll that on my side. You won't know if you succeed or not. Okay. Is this something we want to do? Uh, I'm okay with it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
50-50 chance. It's like, yeah, we could encounter some monsters, or this could be traps. So either way, it's like, yeah, at least we have options, so let's make sure it's yeah, safe. I, I don't want to trust any doors in here. <laughs> All right. So. Um, uh, Perduri, you uh, don't see anything wrong with the door. Meanwhile, Godric and Thetis, what are you all doing? Uh, Godric's gonna go towards this murder hole and, and check if he, he hears anything. Okay. You don't hear anything. Yeah, it sounds like nothing going on there. Uh, Thetis. Okay, in that case, I'll go over to the end doors at the end of the hole and just see if I'm able to go ahead and hear anything on the other side. Okay. Uh, you don't hear anything. Uh, let's see here. Um, Godric, roll a d6. One. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. You can't roll ones. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, uh, who was checking this door? That would be me. Are you were? Okay. Yeah, I was. I was at like the doors at the end there. So that was me. Oh. All right. The door me. flies open, and there are oh, silhouetted against the darkness. There are figures here, who like raise out their hands in unison, and all of a sudden. Cock, 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 cock. <laughs> and there's like flashing lights that are popping off of them. Uh, make a saving throw. Oh boy. <coughs> Failed. <coughs> it's just him. This guy's. Oh, okay. I think a, I think a seven fails. Um, all right. Um, all right. Yeah, and uh, there's like all these uh, these creatures in the doorway. Uh, they're humanoid creatures, but in the light and all the the fireworks going off, you can't really quite make out anything specific about them. What does it keep? Dropping things in weird places. <laughs> and it did another random place. Weird. I don't know. So you heard this probably is the most shocking thing medieval cleric could see in this time. It's like just random fireworks show right in his face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know where it dropped this one. Not figure. Or, uh, about the boundary. Oh my gosh. It's just like whenever you paste something, it places it randomly on the map. Okay, here we are. And uh, let's see here. Are right here. And you got a bunch of your friends around you, different places. And decided not to put it there somewhere else. Uh, everyone make morale checks for your hirelings as this happens. And that's 2d6? Yeah, and you want to get under your morale score I gave you. That's you. No. Does it fail? Okay, uh, how many failed? Well, since Vivian's technically out of action, it's just Gerard, so with my guy, he failed. Okay, um, let's see here. Uh... Ooh. Oops. Place. Uh, roll a d12 uh, for your survivor. Anybody else fail? Godric? Uh, no, Philippe best. Excellent. Okay, so you guys stand strong against this. Uh, pass, pass, and one of them was an eight. My morale check is an eight, so is that a pass? Um, 
I'm not sure. Uh, 2d6. If it's below. It has to be... Um, it actually... I'm Because it actually isn't clear, I'm going to say it has to be above it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so... Uh, that's one fail torch bear, then. Okay, roll a d12. Meanwhile, uh, Thetis, what did you get on your d12? I got a 5. What is it? Who is it for? Erard. Erard, uh, one of these creatures, like, um, grabs Erard and drags him screaming into the darkness. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Ernalt got a 11. An 11. Um, he, he just says, nope, and he walks out. He opens the door, unbars it, and gets out of here, and then closes closes the door back behind him and, and just leaves. He's gonna unspike it. <laughs> yeah, he he kicks the spikes out, and then uh, somebody else comes by and hammers the spikes back in. But he just like walks uh, off. Um. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um. Any spells? Oh, uh, actually, I guess we didn't resolve what happened when you got uh, dazzled. see dazzled um ah we don't know yet so let's see uh yeah declare spells top of the round uh since the one thing i uh detail i think i did notice about these these are humanoid creatures not necessarily undead or anything i also think i'd be probably too dazzled to really pull out uh my holy symbol so yeah, not much else I can do. Okay. Um, no spells then, so uh, let's see. Roll a d6 for initiative, please, Godric. You gotta get a six. No. You got a one. They're able to act first. This is going badly. Um, if you fire missiles from where you are, you have a chance of hitting uh, Thetis if you miss. Does anyone want to try firing missiles? No. Okay. Uh, if you're moving any of your hirelings, do so now. Or your tokens. We've got hirelings, Praderi, and Godric. Nobody's uh, going to move? Hang on. Uh, Praderi will... You cannot move uh, Thetis. You are in melee. Yep, it's Praderi. Uh, Praderi will move... Well, you can, but two. they would get uh, a chance to hit you in plus two to hit. And I'll move up to the. Uh, I'll move up. I'll move up to him. And in, into melee. All right. N sword. Nobody else moving. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, Godric and Philippe are gonna uh, be behind you guys with spears. All right. And none of the other hirelings. Uh, the torch bearers are going to stay at a safe distance. Totally. Okay. Uh, let's see. Melee combat, they're able to act first. Uh, let's see. Razzle Dazzles. Dazzle. Okay, so let's see. Only three are, uh, like, able to fit in the ten, this ten area of space. Only two, because they're double doors, all three will be able to hit. The other two are not able to fit in this 12-foot area where, where the doors are. Uh, let's see here. So this is all to hit their target. So let's see. That's a plus three to hit. Does a fourteen hit? Um, does a fourteen hit uh, Thetis? Uh, the first one, no. Okay. Does a seventeen hit Thetis? The other two, if they're toward target towards me, they both those hit. Okay. Uh, let's see. That is for uh, two d sixes. All right, you Oof. take 10 damage. Yep, I am dead. All right, you are dead. Uh, these things just rip Thetis apart with their claws. Um, <clears throat> and um, let's see here. Uh, that is their turn, and you all are able to attack. Dang. Um, okay, Jerry L attack with uh, my broadsword or 
my bastard sword, I mean. Um, are they CR1? Uh, they're, your target is Ascending Armor nine. Class uh, 15. Nine. They're three hit dice. Okay, so only one attack. Um, so that is 10 plus 1, does, uh, so 11 and misses. Yep. Yeah. Now, I will say, if you, I, I don't know if you are thinking of fleeing, but if you were, something you can, I will tell you that you can tell your hirelings to do is get that door open if you want to try to flee. If you flee somewhere else into the house, I have a table uh, that's similar to a roll to return, if you've ever heard of that. And it's basically what your two hirelings just did. If you flee off somewhere in the house, there's a chance, a random chance that something could happen. It's up to you all. Or you can keep fighting, of course. Or whatever else you come up with. It doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, what, what I'm uh, telling him to, to open the gate uh, just in case. They can yeah. do that. Okay, they run and open the gate. I love the sound effects. <laughs> All right, they, they at least happily it's still uh, the sun is setting outside. It's about to be nighttime, but those things are not out there currently, as far as you can tell. Uh, meanwhile, you're trying to fend off these things from the dead body of your friend. Um, uh, uh, melee attacks? Anybody else? Nobody. Uh, the the pre the the did you attack already? I attacked already. Yes, I missed. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, Godric's gonna take a hit, hit to the to the one in the middle. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, let, let's see. Oof! It misses. And, All right. Uh, Philip's gonna do the same. Okay. That hits. Nice. All right. Oh, it doesn't it doesn't seem to hurt it much. Um, anybody else? All right. Uh, it is their turn to attack. This time they're going to attack uh, Perderi. Wait, no, no. This was. I'm sorry. This is the same turn. Uh, let's see. So round complete. Uh, top of the round. No spells. What is the plan? Fight, flee, or trickery. Uh, so I, I will say flee. Flee, my okay. Pal self, my pal cell phone is to flee. <laughs> <laughs> As you're I dying, you're like, flee, you fools! <laughs> Wait, would I be able to flee with his body? Or would that be too heavy? I, I will make you... I'm going to give you two deals here, okay? The, the one deal is that each of you, uh, including, um, including Philippe, will have an attack on you with a plus two to hit. As you flee, okay, and and that's that's just so each of you. If you try to get his body out, they'll be on you. But if you make it, you'll have his body. It's not worth it. I could roll another character. Just leave me. <laughs> he's a he's an honorable dude. He'll try to take the body. Okay, uh, three attacks against you, uh, and okay. that's your plus one to hit or plus two to hit. Uh, does a 15 hit? No. Oh, wait. 15 plus 3 does an 18 hit. Sorry. Because they uh, have plus 3 because they're HD3. With parry? No. Ah, nice. All right. You manage to, like, dodge and then parry a blow and drag the body down this hallway. As these things start to lumber for towards you, their bodies jerk and, like, make strange movements and, like, electric sparks and stuff is flying off their bodies as they're coming down this hall. Uh, you make it out, and you're able to close the door and uh, make it out the gate with your 50 gold and uh, dead friend uh, and <laughs> not much else. <laughs> and um, you make it down the road uh, away from the fairy lights of, of this, this bizarre, strange castle, and uh, the rest of you survive to make it back into, uh, into town. Whoops.
to tell the tale. And uh, let's see here. We have just six minutes before the adventure ends for the night. Um, I think that was just 50 gold uh, divided between the two survivors. So you each get 25 gold pieces. Um, I don't think anything else was found except the wine bottle, but it would be whoever picked it up. We'll get to keep the wine bottle. Um, you can take it to somewhere in, t in town if you want to try to sell it. Um, yeah. I think, I think he'd do that. Prudary doesn't really drink, so... So, uh... uh but, uh, unless, uh, anyone else wants claim to it. Or, I mean, we'll split the money that we get from it, so... So but there... I don't know if they want to want the actual alcohol. Yeah, there's several places you could go, uh, in town, uh, to, um... To sell it, you can sell it. Try, attempt to sell it here to the barkeep. You could try to sell it down the dark alleyway. You could sell it at the church, at the apothecary, at the curios and antiques shop, or at the hospital, or at the guardhouse. Well, probably going by the church anyways with the body. <laughs> so uh, probably there would. Uh, I guess for for Deary would suggest we sell it. What is what do you do you think, Mr. Omo? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. Uh, at the church. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a young, a young priest in uh, robes with curly hair, a uh, young man probably in his early 20s, comes out. And he's like, Oh, uh, hello, uh, my sons. Um, uh, uh, welcome to the Church of St. Saint Boniface of the Three Testaments. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, well, we uh, ventured to the castle and came back with uh, some ill fate. Uh, my friend here has fallen. We were wondering if he could be interred here. Uh, but also... We received this bottle. I'd be wondering if the church would find value in this. He looks around and he says, "You, you tried to go into the castle." We did. I see. And you, oh dear! And he places his hand on the chubby body of uh, the obviously a cleric, holy symbol and everything on him. He says, "A fellow brother of the light, quickly come inside." And he motions you inside of the church. And you go inside the church, and he leads you into a back sacred sacristy. And he says, I give you this because of the death of my brother. I can give him a good burial here. And then he, uh, he takes out something with holy symbols on it, opens it up. And uh, inside are wooden stakes and vials of water uh, and uh, small crossbows for the stakes. And uh, and they're in, they're engraved with holy symbols. Um, each of you have a vampire hunting kit if you wish it. Interesting. We'll definitely take that. There are pagan, unholy creatures and strange men about the mountains. My forebear once gave these to um, to others that tried to make it into the castle, and, um, well, soon I won't have need of them. Perhaps you can do some good. I will see to the body of, your, of my brother. Much appreciated, Father. Uh, and the bottle? Oh, I, I have no need for extra wine, my son. And he, like, brushes it off. I, I want to ask him if he recognizes the label. Oh, just tasteful. Oh, he sees the silhouette of a woman unclothed and he's like, this is, oh, that's foul. Of course, the Malaval family, the perversions. Detestable. Oh, no, I, I don't recognize it. it. It's probably one of their awful heirs, though, a foreign thing. All right, uh, let's see. We only have one minute left, so I'm going to hop back over to the tavern. And um, the last... Well, first of all, that ends the adventure for the night. <laughs>